Hello and uh, welcome to the beginning of my Unix tutorial series uh, for beginners. Now, assumingly, if you've clicked this video, you know what Unix is. But if you haven't and you just stumbled along on curiosity, well, Unix is an operating system from the 1960s, which uh, we can still find uh, today in our modern operating systems. And it's operating systems like uh, Mac OS X or Linux, which I'm using uh, now. You can even find it on things like an iPhone or a, an Android smartphone. But anyway, you can't actually find it on uh, Microsoft's Windows, which I'm sure most of you are running, most of the population at least. But there is a way of actually getting Unix onto it, which I actually might make a video on uh, later. But anyway, now when I say it, this is a Unix system, I don't mean all this, like all this graphical stuff. I mean what you get in the terminal, or the shell. And you get there by going to the terminal application, or at least terminal in my case. On a Mac it's called terminal, I know that. But on your system it might be called console, or shell, or something like that. Anyway. When I say yes, I mean what you get here in this um, little application, the text. So when I type stuff in, well, commands and stuff, you get output. And that's what I mean by Unix, the shell. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my special uh, terminal with a large font for you guys. Okay, so I must say this. What I have now isn't actually Unix from the 60s. Uh, 20 or 30 years ago, whatever. It was rewritten, and what I have now is called GNU. Um, well, it's not actually called GNU, but well, it's from the GNU Foundation. And the interesting thing about GNU, GNU, is it stands for GNU is not Unix. Yeah, that's the acronym. And basically, what it is, it's it's a clone of it, really. It's Unix rewritten to be open source, or at least open without uh, legal restrictions. Because the original one, Unix, was proprietary, which meant it was had a private owner and had legal restrictions on it. Well, the GNU one, the one I'm running now, run most, if not everyone's running, is uh, open, which means it's got no real restrictions on it. No, back to the shell. Okay, so the Unix shell is a command central thing. You only open it if you want to do something. And you can only do something with commands. For example, uh, this will print out some stuff, and, uh, and so will this. And this will print out the username of whoever is logged in. Okay. So one of the main things you anyone will really want to do on Unix well the shell, I'm going to refer to it now as a sh from now on as the shell one of the main things anyone will want to do with the shell is navigate the file system so make, move, delete files, you know, etc rename them, yep, things like that and I'm going to show you that in this video okay so while navigating the file system, you're going to need to know a few key commands, which are probably the most, the main commands you'll need in Unix or the shell. And the main one will probably be ls. And ls stands for a list. The designers thought it'd be, you know, smart to take out the um, unimportant characters from the words, the verbs, and just make it really short two letters, ls, to um, list files in the directory. And that's fine, I guess. It's a bit confusing at first, but once you get used to it, ls is better. You can type it quicker, it's, it's shorter. It's, yeah, so, ls, use ls to, um, to view the um, files in the directory, to list them in uh, ascending order, from A to Z. Okay, so ls lists the um, files in a directory, 
and you can see which directory you're in. And when I say directory, I mean like the path, the file system path of like where you are. So in terms of Windows, you could have the C drive, you could have your My Documents folder. In uh, Linux, I have my home folder, which I'm currently in. On Mac, it's the same. So, And you can see what current directory you're in on the Unix shell by typing the pwd command. And this basically stands for personal work directory. So the current directory you're working in. So let's quickly clear that. So I'll type in pwd and it tells me I'm in home Michael and that's a directory. The first folder is called home and in the home folder I'm in Michael. And this is the directory I'm in. So let's say I want to change directories. So I want to change the current place I'm in. So, well, I have to go somewhere. So I'll click hit ls to see where I can go. And I guess I'll go to this workspace folder. I can tell it's a directory because it's in blue or green outside of the blue in this case. That's because it's uh, one of the attributes of it. But anyway. Uh, so I type in cd, and now this is another new command, cd. Well, cd stands for change directory, and this command you can change the current directory you're into another. So I'm going to type cd into the name of the directory I want to go to. Now you notice there's nothing before it, you know, no path before this workspace name, and that's because, well, I'm in this home folder which contains uh, the workspace folder so cd workspace will hit enter and type in pwd and look my work directory has changed to workspace so I'll type in ls and ls tells me that there's four folders in this uh, workspace folder and it's these four so let's cd again to quadratic one and it's ls okay and I can see more files I can see the uh, program I wrote for Android okay so let's say I want I have a file here called my file right so I can have a look at what's in this my file There's this cat command I'll explain it later and I see it's a text file which has this uh, gibberish in it okay well let's say this my file that I've made is in the wrong place. I don't want it in this quadratic factorizer folder. I want it in the bin folder. This here. So what I want to do is move this file into here. And in Linux to do this use uh, the move command or it's typed mv. So mv is just move and we type mv and then the file we want to move which is called my file in this case and then the directory we want to move it to so bin okay and then we'll type ls again and we see there's no my file anymore in this um, directory and we'll type ls bin and you see what I'm doing here before I haven't really typed anything after ls but I'm typing bin after ls now so what this is going to do is it's going to look in the bin folder and list the files in that. It's not actually going to list the files in the current one, rather the one I've typed. Okay, so you can specify which directory to list files in. All right, so I hit enter and I see that my file is in the right one. So for sake of this, I'm going to cd into the bin. Okay, now I'm in it. Okay, so. Let's say I accidentally misspelled my file. Let's say I want to call it something different, like your file. So I'm going to use the same command I've already told you. It's called move. Okay. So this is the rename command, realistically. You're essentially moving this my file to a new file. See what I mean? With a different name. Because, well, when you move something, you don't actually copy it over and delete, you just move it you're not really copying so this is the same for renaming you're not actually copying it over and then renaming it no you're just renaming it so 
that makes sense to you. Sorry, that explanation. So you type MV and the original file, and then the new files. And there, and type ls to see what's done. And look, no more my file, but this is your file. And we can cat it again, so it's still the same thing. And yep, it's still the same thing. Alright, let's just say now that we don't want this file at all. It's absolutely useless. We want to delete it. Well, to delete a file in Unix, we type the remove command. And it's uh, referred to as rm. rm stands for remove, of course. So we'll type rm your file. And we'll type ls, and it's completely gone. It's deleted. It's no longer on my file system. And now here's a quick shortcut that uh, you may find useful. Uh, let's say I want to go back. I'm in this crazy directory. I want to go back to my home folder. Well, to go back here without um, typing cd home Michael, I don't want to type this. It's too long. I just type in cd, then tilde, the squiggly line. And in uh, Unix or the shell, the t uh, tilde is a shortcut for in for the home directory. So if I type, you'll see that um the tilde is uh, the home path. And you know, for the sake of it, echo the echo command echoes whatever you just um, wrote to the sh command line. So hello, and it's gonna go it back. Alright, so anyone anyway, knows CD tilde, which is the equivalent of CD home Michael. And I'm going to see my work directory and it's in home. Let's type ls here. Okay. Now, what I've showed you is actually rather simplistic. It's really simple commands. And uh, command arguments as well. But let's say I'll show you some more advanced uh, examples. You know, now, actually, I'll show you some now. Well, actually, no, I'll show you how to find the disk space of file users. So let's say I have this Linux Mint 10 GNOME CD ISO, this disk image in my home directory. And I've really uh, recently noticed my disk is running out of hard disk space, and I want to see how much space this ISO is using. So to do this, I'll type in du, and what du stands for is disk usage. So I'll type in du, and Linux Mint 10 GNOME CD or ISO, and it gives me this line: 716060 and the file name. This is how much disk space um, this file is uh, taking on the hard drive, and this is in kilobytes. So this is six hundred seven thousand seven hundred thousand six no seven hundred and sixteen thousand sorry kilobytes, which is seven hundred and sixteen megabytes of disk space, which yep, it's reasonable. I'm not gonna delete it. Um oh, what I've just done here is um I've cleared the screen. So let's say I've got a lot of garbage typed up. Yep. Okay, so now I want to clear it, it's all messy. I can either type clear or I can do a quick shortcut and type control and L. Yep, so control L will clear the screen and leave the current line or so will clear. Alright, so let's get on to the more advanced ones. So let's say I'm in this folder, the root, what's called the root folder which is the top directory where the entire file system lives and we can see the home folder that um, all my files live in okay so let's say I want to um, cd I want to move this file uh, one folder up one, no, no, no I'm going to cd into another folder Let's Let's go to workspace. We'll go back to quad. Okay, let's say I want to move. Yeah, I'll make a new one. Echo. Pay no attention to this. It's just just to make an example. 
Okay. So let's say I want to move this my file into my home folder from uh, the root folder. So I'm here and I want this my file into my home directory. Well, to do this, I'd use the move command, wouldn't I? Yep. So I'll type move, and ultimately I'm going to have to type all this. And you'll notice I'm typing forward slash. Oh, you know what tilde is? That's a that's the equivalent of this. Yes, is it not? Or the equivalent of your username? So I'm type tilde, but I'm typing also a forward slash. And the forward slash is what you use to represent a folder, so a folder path. So in this case, bin folder, and it'll tell me it's a directory. All right, so if I type that, um, yeah, see, I need the forward slash, so it's a directory. So anyway, what was what was I? I was I was doing. Uh, Oh, that's right, moving the my file to uh, my home directory. So I type mv tilde, which is the same as home Michael, forward slash, and what was it? It was workspace, was it not? And it was quadratic factorizer, and it was my file. Yes? And now space, so new parameter tilde, or, yeah, you know, I'm just going to write home Michael. Normally I wouldn't write this, I just write tilde, but anyway, enter. So I'm going to look in my home directory and, well you see, I can scroll in this, but on some computers where it's completely a terminal, you can't scroll. Yep, so those people, they need more, to see more uh, information on the screen, but they don't have the scroll. So, in order to see my my file folder, which I've moved here, I'm going to have to type in a second command. So, and it's the button under the backspace with a shift. So hold shift and the button under the backspace, and you get this straight line. And I'm going to type in less. So it's going to shorten the amount uh, print on the screen. I'll explain uh, this thing here later and how this works in a different video. It's one of the advanced parts of Linux. But, and, no, yeah. and this is going to list all the files in the directory part by part. So as I hit uh, return, the enter key, it's going to keep displaying it every other line, line by line. So I'll keep going down to M, see if the my file is there. And what do you know? It's there. So I've successfully moved it Way. So I've seen all I wanted to see, so I'll just hit the Q button to get out of the less, and there we go, back to the shell. So I can still, so I know that my file is uh, in this folder. All right, so I've, I've showed moving files, I've showed renaming. Uh, let's see, let's get on to paths. All right, so let's say I'm in here, and I want to quickly get to the home directory. Well, that's one up. So, I type in CD. I could type in this, or alternatively, what um, you could do as a shortcut is type in dot, and dot will um. Sorry, not dot. My bad. Dot dot, and dot. Well, the dot will um represents the current directory you're in. It's a current folder that you're current in. But dot dot is its parent folder. It's it's the folder that contains it. So C D dot dot will get me up one and I'll type in and I'll see I'm in home. So let's see this dot. Okay, so let's go on to the dot. C D Michael. Let's say I want to type a command and it's going to be deleting that my file. Well, I would have to type dot my file. Oops, sorry, my bad. rm dot slash my file. 
So th this is the current uh, directory. So these two represent the current directory plus the my file folder. Well, actually, you don't actually need this, but for some commands, uh, you do. But anyway, you don't. Yeah. And it's deleted the my file. Alternatively, you could have that. It's equivalent, same thing. Why I showed you this dot slash is because some commands need it, and you'll know what as you time progresses. An example will be probably this one. ASCII print. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what this is, but anyway, let's just say I have Python. Yo, actually, never mind. I won't even bother with that. I have no idea what that is. Okay, so the main reason why anyone would use Unix is because it, it's a lot faster than a uh, typical file manager. I mean, I could open up one right now and I could see all the files I've been uh, editing. Perhaps, see, I can see the workspace folder, I can see quadratic, so all the stuff. I could do it all here. But let's say, I, but it's faster because you can do lots of things at once. So I, I can see there's a lot of uh, .c files, so C code that I've written over the time. And let's say I want to organize my directory. I want to move all the C files into another folder. Let's call it C. All right. So I'll go back to the shell because this is um, the on Unix I'm from. Type Control L, clear the screen, and I want to move all the C files into a directory. in home called C. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is create a directory. And to make a directory in uh, the shell, you type mkdir. And what this stands for is quite obvious, make directory. Alright, so we type mkdirc. And this will make a C directory in the current directory, which is home. So I'm going to type make directory C. Now, if I type ls and then uh, C, whoops, oh, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Uh, ls star C. Okay, so when I type ls, whoops, I'll type in ls ls. And we'll see there's a C folder right here. Oh, it's apparently two folders. Okay, so I'll type in CD now. I'm going to go to the uh, C folder I made. Have a look at it. Nothing's in it. It's a blank folder. Okay, so I'm going to go back, back to home, and I want to move all these .c files into this C folder. Well, obviously, I would use a C command the move command, sorry. And now here's something new. I'm going to type an asterisk. And what this asterisk is, is it's a wildcard, or what's referred as a wildcard. And basically, the star re references represents every possible text you could make. For example, you could write my name, Michael, as star L. These are equivalent or Mike star L or Mike star A L, but it wouldn't be um, Mike star L A L star this would not be the equivalent the equivalent alright but these two are so you see what I mean? I mean in this case the star represents A E or in this case, it represents my cat. So the star character represents text that you don't actually know. Okay, so I'm going to type move and then star character dot C. So in this case, it's going to reference every possible file name in this directory. So it's going to represent echo and then, yeah, but this dot C. Well, that's going to pinpoint it down to a few. So it'll only reference these. 
it won't reference this because it's got some text after it. So it will only reference this file, this file, and this file. But it won't reference any other really because they're not .c and they're just finished suddenly. I mean, in this case, there's some text after it, so it won't reference it. No, so we're moving all the star .c's to the C directory. Yeah, let's write it as .c. Okay, and hit enter. It's done it all. Let's have a look at it. There we go. All of our .c code is moved into um, this C folder, just like that. So, and in one command, relatively simple. I've moved all my C folders files into this folder. Easy, right? Okay. Now let's say I want to copy all those files that I've just moved. All these files I want just moved into my uh, into a new folder. Okay, I'll make a new folder right now. So I want a clone of it. So I want all these files again in this new folder because currently there's nothing in it. So I'll go back a bit. LS, see that I'm in my uh, C folder. So what I type in is cp, so whether I showed you cp yet, or if I haven't, cp stands for copy, and what it does is it copies files. Okay, so cp, I'm just going to use star, so that's every single possible file in this directory, so it's going to move absolutely everything into new folder. Hit enter. And there we go. What do you know? It's decided to skip. Emitting directory there. That's basically jargon for skipping this directory. Not going to copy it. Okay, so that's how you copy files with the asterisk. Then, so let's say I want to find the files. I'm at my shell. I've been working on some code and now I've lost it. I want to find it. I forgot the directory it's in. So I type the find command. Now it's not called FND, it's not called fin, it's called find. Okay, you can't really shorten it. FD, it could be FD, but it's, you know, no, it's just find. Okay, so now this find command has parameters on it, and it actually have, has a lot. And I can't actually sit here and explain every single one of them to you because that would take a ridiculous amount of time. So what you do is you type dash dash help and this is a parameter to basically every unix command and hitting enter is going to print out a bunch of information so I can see now that there's more information that can fit on my screen so I'm going to use less or what I basically just did there is I hit the up bu uh, button and that's a shortcut to getting to what you've just typed what you've just entered so here I can browse through all the commands I've typed today or in a period of time okay so I'm gonna hit up once help straight line less there now I'm gonna see all the output that the help command gives you like so okay so I'm gonna look at this what what do I need what do I need it's all crazy this doesn't make any sense to me. So, in order to use this, I'm going to type man find. Now, man is a very useful uh, command, and what it basically stands for is manual. So, man will give you the manual for find. Man will not work for actually everything. A lot of commands won't have a man manual, but basically all Unix commands do, but the ones you download the internet, they probably won't have one. They could, but they probably won't. So man find is going to give us a manual. It gives us help here on the bottom. We can either 
uh, press H for help, more help, or here yeah, we can use the arrow keys to navigate. And this gives us a brilliant description of the man find command, which is absolutely excellent. You can become an expert on find with this. Here's a parameters you can, you know, all the information, all this text describing just about everything. Descriptions of every little parameter you have. See if we can have one to turn off warning messages here. Well, I'm already quite familiar with find, and so I'm going to type find iname. So it's going to find all files with this name, and I'm going to type star dot c, all my c files. Type, I want to, I only want files, so type f, and ooh, that's all I realistically need. Okay, enter. And it's going to go and find, print every single C file in my uh, directory. Simple enough. I'll type it again for a different type. I'll call it APK. And this prints every single APK file I have in my home folder, or at least my current directory. And you see these dot, these file paths? Well, these are actual file paths relative to what directory you're in now. So, if it's like this here, if I were to do it in this command, now what's happening now is this is search, searching my entire file system for APK files. Looking, looking. I literally have tens of thousands of files in this hard drive. It'll take ages to search it. So, quick shortcut there. This third parameter so it makes it so it only searches the home folder. Path must proceed home. Oh, that's right. You have to type it here, I think. Whoops. And there we go. And we see this path is different to this path because they're relative, they're relative to what directory you're in. Okay, so let's see, what to, what to do, clear the screen. Let's see, I've covered quite a bit. I've probably gone longer than I should have, but hey, it's, it's Unix, there's a lot to cover. Oh, man command. So, Basically, every command I've said, there's a man manual for. And you can get a good description of about everything. Normally, I don't actually go in the manual. I just type in uh, dash dash help. And this will give me a help for everything. So it gives you a brief description. I want to copy files by force. I want to copy a directory. No, this is directory. And, yeah, things like that. So, you know, I'll do an example. I want to copy a directory. So let's see, what, what do I have now? Um, in my root folder, so I'll go to the home. And let's... Okay, let's move this C folder to workspace, okay? So to do this, I'm going to type... You know, not move, let's copy it, okay? So copy, so I'll type CP. You know, I'm just going to show an example of what a typical person who's trying to copy would do. So... C and then workspace. This is probably what you do, right? So let's hit enter. And it tells me it's a directory. It's not going to copy the directory. So in order to make to do it, let's look at the help. Alright, so this is what you probably should do when trying to do this and it doesn't work. Look at the help page. Okay, and we see that it, um, we need to read these Keep going down, down. Here we go. Look at this one. R, recursive. Copy directory. Copy of directories recursively. I think that's the one we're missing. R. Ah, here we go. V, verbose. This actually doesn't really affect anything. It just um, tells the command to print what it's doing. I always like to do it when. Um, 
doing it. Okay, so I'm going to type cp dash r for recursive dash v. Now these dashes, these are what you um, type in order to give a parameter to the cp. And a quick hint is you don't actually have to type this second dash. You could just type rv. But this is only for some applications, so generally I just type rv like this. And then we'll type C and then workspace. Now you see it's printed up a ton of stuff. Just a ton of information. Too much information. This is because I typed V verbose. So it verbosely told me everything that's happening. So let's have a look at workspace. And we see there's a C file. So let's let's see what's in C. And it's all this stuff. Okay. So let's say I have a command. I've written up my own command because I'm a programmer. So let's say I have one. Let's quickly compile this code. Don't really pay attention to this. Okay. And I have my command called gcd. Let's say I want to execute this command in this directory. Well, you'd guess I typed gcd, right? This is what you'd assume would happen. Well, if I hit enter, it's, it's not going to work. This is because when you type gcd, it searches the uh, bin folder of the uh, root directory. So, uh, this folder and this folder and this folder. It searches these three directories for uh, gcd. And it doesn't find it, so it tells me command not found. Well, Obviously, it's not found because the uh, executables in this directory, it's not in any of those three. So, in order to execute this command, I'm going to have to specify that the command is in this directory. The dot slash, remember this? Well, anyway, dot gcd. Hitting enter, and the command is executing. This is the uh, program I wrote, and we'll there, uh, and yep. So that's basically it. Yeah, I have no idea how long this video is going for, but I think it's enough to cover uh, file moving <laughs> and stuff. This is probably too long, actually. Let me just look at this. You see here, there's a Unix shell as well. It's what I'm using to record my R screen. Looking here, it tells me it's a whole gigabyte. Wow. Doesn't actually tell me how long it is, but oh, here we go. 35 minutes. Wow. Long video. I'm going to end it now. Okay. Goodbye. I'll make another uh, few more videos on Unix. See you in those videos. Bye.